Hey creatives, today I'm going to go through my whole pencil colouring process for colouring in a image of a person. So you might remember this page from a couple of weeks ago when I was playing around with some very easy ways of building up acrylic paint layers in a junk journal. But I never actually showed you how I coloured in this image. So today that's what we're going to do. Oh, and if you missed the video of that art journal page, then I've put a link in the cards and also in the description below, so don't forget to watch that too. So I'm going to colour her with the exactly same colours as I used before. So she's very pale skinned and she's got blonde hair with blue ends. So for light skin tones, I tend to start with peach colours or a colour that's called seashell pink in the Prisma colours. Now I'm going to be swapping between Prismacolors and the Faber-Castell Polychromos because basically I'm phasing out my Prismacolors. So I won't necessarily mention exactly which colour I'm using, but I will list all the colours that I have used down in the description below. So with the first layer of colour, I work all the way around the shaded areas and the places that are going to have the most shadow on the face with this light colour. And I'm just putting down a really thin layer first. Now you could, if you want, just skip this layer and go straight to some dark colours in the shadows. And sometimes when I'm shortcutting, I'll do that as well. But I tend to do this layer to mark out for myself where the shadows are going to be, how I want the face to look, and all of those sorts of things. So I'm leaving the areas completely blank and without any pencil on them where they're going to be the lightest. I'm not going to give them any features, but I will put in a slight nose or a slight shadow where the nose is going to be but I'm not going to emphasize it or make it into an actual feature. And you know, you can, that's no problem at all. I'm keeping this very basic so you can just get the general idea of how I go about it. So I'll speed it up a little bit here, otherwise we will be here all day. At this point also, don't forget all the other bits that might have some skin showing, arms, necks, feet, all that kind of thing. Once I've got that first layer down, then I'll start working more in the shadows and I'll go to a darker colour. And which colour will depend on what tone of skin I'm going for. So for a lighter skin, I would probably go for something like a sienna. Something that has a warm tone to it. And I'll be using this in the hairline areas and anywhere that's going to cast a dark shadow. And as you can see, I'm building it up very gradually. You don't really want to press too hard with your pencils, so I go with softer covering strokes and they're quite short as well. I know some people like using circles and I do sometimes use circles when I'm colouring, but it tends to be more a backwards and forwards stroke for this type of work. And you can also spot that I'm using a soft brush just to get any flakes or crumbs of colour off of the areas that I don't want it to be, so anything that falls off of the tip which can kind of happen from time to time. Now at this point, I kind of work backwards and forwards between that light shade and the dark shade. So I'm using light shade just to blend in the dark shade. And I'll just keep going backwards and forwards between those two colors before I add in a more rosy color for the cheeks. And if you missed it, I do have another pencil coloring tutorial. So I'll leave a link to that in the cards and also in the description below so you can watch that too. in a little bit more contrast so I'm just going to use a really dark brown in the very corners and where the most shade is going to be so the far corners of her cheeks and also a little bit on the hairline too then I'll come back in with my lightest color and blend that dark shading in plus smoothing out the rest of skin tone as well and I'll do that a couple of times until I'm happy with the results and not forgetting the other areas of skin as well and then I might go back and add some more colour to the cheek. So you can kind of see that I move backwards and forwards over these tones and swap between my pencils until I've got to a place where I want the colouring to be. Now so far I've used quite a few different colours in each of the areas. You can get away with just using a couple of colours for each area. So if you're just starting out, don't feel that you have to get all of the colours. 
A light tone and a dark tone in the same colour family will take you a long way. And as you progress, you just add to your collection. If you think you're going to be doing a lot of this and a lot of these types of images, then it is really worthwhile getting a full range of skin tones. Quite often when you buy the big sets, they, they have a rainbow of colours. And not necessarily colours that you'll use a lot. Sometimes it works out cheaper to get sets. In the long run, if you don't use every pencil in the set, then it isn't really. So if you're just starting out, have a think about what you want to do with your pencils and buy the colours that you're going to need to do that. So if you're colouring in flowers and butterflies and things like that, then you maybe won't need skin tones. Anyway, I would be interested to hear what you're actually going to be colouring, so please do let me know what your favourite thing is to colour. Her eyes are big enough that you can get some actual details in them. So for this I'm going to use slightly different strokes. So if you notice I'm using short tapered strokes. And if I slow it down perhaps you can see it a little bit better. So I start strong and then I just let the pencil taper off the page. And it's a nice way of just adding a little bit of texture to the iris. And I also swap between a couple of colours for this, so a blue colour and a greeny blue colour. And once you've got a little bit of colour in there, you can also go around the edges, the outside edge of the iris to darken it up a little bit. Once I've got the eye colour where I want it, then I'll add some shadow in using a couple of grey colours. And you just want to add a little bit of shadow where the eyelid meets the eyeball. And this will just add a little bit more depth to the picture. Next I'm going to work on her hair. And for the hair I use longer tapered strokes. So very much like on the iris, but this time they're just going to be longer. And I'm just starting with the lightest colour and I'll be adding in darker colours as we go along. So the general rule of thumb that I use here is to concentrate the colour on the areas like the roots, so the parting line, and other areas that you think are going to be shaded. So the hair that falls behind the head, areas like that. It's not going to be over complicated because this is a very simple image. So other than using the tapered strokes and a little bit of light and shade, I'm not adding that much more texture in. And you also might have spotted that all of my strokes sort of follow the way that I think the hair is going to go. So it all goes in one direction. And this is going to give the hair some more body and some more form. If you just colour it in a block shape, it tends to just look a little flat. And hair doesn't really do that. Hair has its own shape and its own form. So by using these long tapered pencil strokes and giving each stroke one direction, then you can give the hair more life and more form. And if you practice that with a simple image like this, then when you come to do something more complex, where you may have a curl in the hair, or you want to put a curl into the hair, then you'll find it gets a little bit easier. Because you've already trained yourself to follow the direction of the hair, and how to use your pencil to give it some body and some shape. So let's move on to the wings and we're going to have a little bit of fun with the wings and mix it up a little bit with some different colours. So I'm just going to use three colours for this, a pink, a blue and a yellow. And the first thing I'm doing is just putting a very light layer of each of the colours down in the place that I want those colours to be. And it's going to be a bit of a patchwork. Once I've covered both of the wings with those colours, I'll go back over them and blend them out a little bit more. And there may be a little bit of colour mixing at the edges where different colours meet each other. But that will all add to the look as well. I think I possibly might have been thinking about unicorns when I came up with this colour scheme. And I wanted the wings to be a little bit magical. So I hope some of the tips in the video so far have been helping you. And also I hope it's inspiring you to get your pencils out and do some more colouring. I know it's not something that I do an awful lot of these days. I used to do a lot more image colouring than I do now. But it's kind of nice to do something different and a different pace every now and then. Anyway, if the video is useful to you and you've been enjoying it, please do like it. And please do share it with other people you think might enjoy it and find it useful too. 
And of course, if you're not one of my subscribers already, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss my next art video. You can see the blending a little bit better in this close-up. I'm not trying to get a perfect blend, but I am trying to make all the colour the same sort of intensity. And it just takes a couple of layers going back over with each of the colours. Before we move on from the wings, I've got another super tip for you. And to make those wings pop and look as if they're behind her head and not next to her head, I'm just going to put a line of grey around her hairline. And it's just another great way of giving her more shape and form and making her look a little bit more real. I'm just going to keep her dress really simple. So I've put a layer of pink down and I'm just using a dark red to add the shading with. But I thought I'd show you this bit because, well, this pencil's just getting a little bit too small to hold. So I've got a pencil extender, which is really quite handy to have to hand if you've got one. And it means these little stubs are a lot more comfortable to hold. I'm also trying not to over sharpen this little stub. So that's when the sandpaper comes in useful again. Hopefully you can see the details a lot clearer in this close-up. I added a tiny touch of colour to her lips, but I left a little bit uncoloured there, so you can see a little bit of a light speck. And that's again to add a bit more shape and form. Hopefully you can also see what I meant about the hair and the tips I gave you there. I hope they help. And I hope you like the unicorn wings. So have tons of fun colouring with your coloured pencils. Give me a shout if you've got any questions at all. And don't forget to let me know which pencils you're using at the moment. So I'm going to be back on Sunday with my new art video. In the meantime, you can watch these videos for some more tips and inspiration. It's been great sharing with you again. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.